You guys see that up there? That bright, fiery ball in the sky that's making my face super dark and totally blowing out my shot right now? I never thought I'd see that thing again. What's going on everybody? Jack here at the Mindful Homestead again, and I am loving life right now. See how dark I am? You can't even see me because of that bright thing behind me. I was beginning to think that I was never gonna see the sun again. After two days of straight rain, well, let me back up a little bit. We had almost three weeks with almost zero rain. It was actually pretty crazy. We were in an official drought. And then we got two days earlier this week where it poured all day. It rained nonstop. It became an absolute slop fest. Our last video that we put out, which I'll link up in the corner, talks about it, shows you how crazy things were. It was just a, a, a gross mud fest everywhere on the homestead. Luckily for us, everything dried out today. It was about 85 degrees and no rain. It was just a beautiful cloudless sky, which was really great because we had a lot of things that we needed to do today before the 4th of July weekend, and we were able to get to them, which was awesome. The biggest thing was probably getting the new layers into the rest of the flock with our current layers. We picked up five ISA browns and five white leggerns earlier this spring. We had a lot of Easter eggers in there, and while Easter eggers lay cool colored eggs, they're not necessarily the most productive of layers. So we wanted to get some more production oriented breeds in there and have more eggs for our customers that are buying eggs from us. So we snuck them into the coop last night while everyone was asleep. We let everyone out this morning and while they are shying away from the rest of the chickens, there's not a lot of fighting or pecking order issues going on, which is your biggest concern when you put new chickens in with an established flock. So that's been pretty awesome and we're really happy about it. And chicken math dictates that if you have increased chickens and increased heat, you're gonna need more water. So this right here is a Harris Farms Easy Fill Water. Uh, holds over five gallons. It's great top fill, which is awesome. Super easy to use. We've had this thing probably for about, I think we got it last summer. So we've had it about a year. Aside from the fact that you can't use it in the winter, the only other issue I have with this thing so far on a regular basis is that it grows a lot of algae because if it's in the sun and it's got this translucent plastic, there's a lot of UV light going through and algae tends to grow pretty quickly in this thing. The only other issue we've had with it is that intermittently it leaks water out the bottom. The way this works is there's a float in the bottom and that float moves up and down to determine whether to let water out of this reservoir and into the drinking trough area. The water itself is a pretty awesome design. Using that float was a really ingenious idea to make it so that you could fill this thing from the top. The downside to it and where they really kind of messed up was that they made that float in two pieces a top and a bottom piece that snap together and they didn't seal where the top goes onto the bottom so over time what ends up happening is your float fills up with water and it no longer floats which is what the float is supposed to do and what i've done with this water so far is whenever it gets to that point where the float's not floating anymore i'll pull the whole thing apart i'll pull the two pieces of the float apart dump it out and then reassemble the whole thing and cross my fingers that it works it doesn't always work when that float fills up all the water drains out of this thing and you're left with a water that has no water in it if you're in a position to watch your chickens regularly and keep a close eye on them it's not so much of a big issue if you were to take a long weekend and go somewhere and you left this out as your sole water for your poultry i wouldn't want to trust it just because if it's going to be hot out and your chickens have no water that's a bad place and you could lose a lot of animals. My main gripe with it is that the whole thing is intermittent. It's not like a slow process where it slowly takes on more and more water. There seems to be very little rhyme or reason to it, which is why we're gonna fix this once and for all today. All right, so let's start by taking this thing apart. If you pull your lid off and look inside, you'll see that there's a little plastic nut down at the bottom. If you remove that nut, make sure you don't lose your O-ring that's on there. Once you have that plastic nut out, you can pull the top off and then you can access the float that's in the bottom. Now, if you look at this, you can actually see the residue of where I've tried to use duct tape in the past to get this thing to seal. And obviously the duct tape didn't work, otherwise I wouldn't be making this video. And here's your problem. There's no seal in here at all on either the outside or the inside that would keep this from filling up with water. I don't know if they thought that this piece would float like a little boat and then that they just put the top on as kind of a, a formality. Even if they used a rubber gasket or an O-ring or something like that, it would be way better than the design that they have right now. Maybe it was a Monday when they designed this. Maybe it was the guys last week and he was just done with it. But either way, it's a terrible design and we need to fix it. 
So to fix it, we're gonna use some DAP silicone plus caulking or silicone sealant. And really it couldn't be more simple to get this fixed. I'm gonna use a cloth to make sure this is all dry. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna put a bead of silicone around here. I'm gonna put a bead of silicone around the inside here. And I'm gonna press the two pieces together and then we're just gonna wait until that silicone cures. I run inside, grab a piece of paper towel to dry that thing out and I come back outside and it's starting to rain. So let's take this party inside. Now that we've got the silicone in here and it's all cleaned up, we're going to let this cure for 12 hours or so, and we'll come back tomorrow and we'll reassemble the waterer. All right, so it's been a few days. This has had plenty of time to cure. The sun is still out. It's sealed up pretty well. I'm pretty sure the silicone will hold, so there's not a whole lot of pressure going on. So let's put it back together and give it a test. So it's all put back together. It sounds like it's working. If you tip it upside down, you can hear that float moving around in there. So I think we're all good. So let's go put it in the chicken run, fill it with water and see what happens. So now the plan is going to be to watch right here, which is the low point of the trough, to see if it stops or if it keeps filling up. And it looks like it might have stopped. Tell you what, let's go feed the pigs and we'll come back in a few minutes and check on this. So we're back in the coop and here's what it looks like. Another thing to check on the waters is just to make sure that that nut that goes in the center of the bucket, make sure that's tightened because if it's not tightened down all the way, that will leak as well. I know for us, it's been pretty tiring to have to worry about it all the time and whether or not it's actually gonna work. Overall, we look pretty good. I'm happy with how it turned out. If you have one of these waters and it's leaking on you, it's definitely worth it to pull that float out and see if the float is filled with water. Let us know in the comments down below if you fixed your water. We'd love to hear how it worked for you, how long it's worked for you, if you've done this in the past or if you're gonna be doing it. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.